Welcome to this video tutorial on EKG interpretation, atrial flutter, and AFib. In this video, we will be looking at how to interpret an EKG strip, specifically atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation. If you haven't already, you may want to watch our basic EKG interpretation video first. It goes over more detailed steps of how to read an EKG strip, and it's a good refresher. First, let's take a look at a simple five-step approach to reading all EKG strips. Number one, what is the heart rate? Count how many R waves in six seconds. This is the ventricular heart rate. The QRS complex represents the ventricles contracting. Two, are there P waves present? Count how many in six seconds. This is the atrial heart rate. Remember, the P wave represents the atria contracting. Three, are the P waves regular? Measure with calipers or a piece of paper. Number four, are the R waves regular? Again, measure with calipers or paper. And number five, how long is the PR interval? It's normally 0.12 to 0.2 seconds, or three to five small squares. And what is the width of the QRS complex? It is normally 0.06 to 0.12 seconds, or one and a half to three boxes. Let's evaluate a normal sinus rhythm using these five steps. Number one, what is the heart rate? Count how many R waves in six seconds and multiply by 10, or count how many in three seconds and multiply by 20. Here we have four R waves in three seconds times 20 equals 80 beats per minute. And remember, normal heart rate falls between 60 to 100. Number two, are there P waves present? Since we have three seconds here, we'll multiply the number of P waves by 20. So four P waves times 20 shows an atrial rate of 80 beats per minute. Three, are the P waves regular? Start from the beginning of one P wave to the beginning of the next P wave, measuring with calipers or paper. In this case, the P waves do measure out to be regular distances apart. Number four, are the R waves regular? Do this again for the R waves and they also measure out equal or almost equal distances apart. There might be a slight variation in length and that is okay. We have to allow for some fluctuation in heart rate. And number five, how long is the PR interval? It's normally 0.12 to 0.2 seconds or three to five small squares. This represents the time it takes an impulse to travel from the sinus node to the ventricles. In this normal sinus rhythm, the PR interval does fall in the normal range. We also want to ask, what is the width of the QRS complex? This represents the contraction of the ventricles. They're normally 0.06 to 0.12 seconds, or one and a half to three small squares. And the QRS complex is within the normal range here. Now we'll take a look at atrial flutter. Atrial flutter occurs when the electrical impulses of the heart take an abnormal path through the atria, usually circulating around the tricuspid valve in the right atrium. The atria discharge between 240 to 400 regular impulses every minute. These atrial contractions produce flutter, or F waves, that have a sawtooth appearance. With such rapid atrial contractions, the AV node slows them down often with every second or third contraction reaching the ventricle. The ventricles often respond to the impulses at a regular rate, therefore the QRS complexes are usually normal and regular. The number of F waves to QRS complexes is expressed as a ratio. For example, in atrial flutter with an atrial rate of 280 and a ventricular rate or pulse rate stuck at 70, it is referred to as a four to one AV conduction. Atrial flutter usually indicates underlying disease and may show symptoms of palpitations, shortness of breath, anxiety, or weakness. Now we'll use the five-step approach to evaluate atrial flutter. Number one, what is the heart rate? Counting the R waves, or QRS complexes, in six seconds, there are seven. So seven times 10 equals a ventricular rate of 70 beats per minute. Number two, are there P waves present? No, only sawtoothed flutter or F waves. The atrial rate can be figured out by counting the number of F waves in the six seconds and multiplying by 10. There are 28 F waves, so the atrial rate is 280 beats per minute. Number three, are the P waves regular? There are no P waves, so this doesn't apply. 
Number four, are the R waves regular? This is the interval from one R wave to the next. If you use calipers or a paper to mark the beginning of the QRS complex to the beginning of the next QRS complex, you see that the QRS complexes, or R waves, occur at regular intervals. However, sometimes they can be irregular also. And number five, how long is the PR interval? Since there are no P waves, it is not measurable. So then what is the width of the QRS complex? They are all normal, falling between 0.06 to 0.12 seconds. Now let's take a look at atrial fibrillation, or AFib, the most common abnormal heart rhythm. Instead of one impulse moving through the heart as it should, many impulses begin in the atria and fight to get through the AV node. The atria depolarize chaotically at rates of 350 to 600 beats per minute. These extra impulses trying to get through the AV node cause the atria to fibrillate or quiver and twitch in a fast and disorganized way. This chaotic electrical activity results in a chaotic waveform between the QRS complexes. The P waves are absent and are replaced by lowercase f waves. No P wave means there are no PR intervals. The rapid electrical activity overwhelming the AV node causes impulses to enter the ventricular conduction system at irregular points without a discernible pattern, resulting in an irregularly irregular ventricular rhythm, or R waves. This irregular heart rhythm can cause symptoms such as shortness of breath, exercise intolerance, heart palpitations, or weakness, but some people experience no symptoms at all. However, if left untreated, the side effects can be life-threatening, leading to stroke or heart failure. Now we'll use the five-step approach to evaluate atrial fibrillation. Number one, what is the heart rate? Counting the R waves, or the QRS complexes, in six seconds, there are seven. So seven times 10 equals a ventricular rate of 70 beats per minute. Number two, are there P waves present? No, only fibrillatory or F waves. The atrial rate is impossible to determine, but is very fast, most certainly greater than 350 beats per minute. Number three, are the P waves regular? There are no P waves, so this doesn't apply. Four, are the R waves regular? If you use calipers or a paper to mark the beginning of the QRS complex to the beginning of the next QRS complex, you see that the QRS complexes, or R waves, occur at irregular intervals. And number five, how long is the PR interval? Since there are no P waves, it is not measurable. And what is the width of the QRS complex? They are all normal, falling between 0.06 to 0.12 seconds. Both atrial flutter and AFib are common abnormal heart rhythms. They are both types of supraventricular tachycardia, which means a rapid heartbeat occurring above the ventricles. In AFib, the heart beats fast and in no regular pattern or rhythm. With atrial flutter, the heart beats fast, but in a regular pattern, the sawtooth pattern. Let's do a quick comparison to review. In atrial flutter, the atrial rate is between 240 to 400 beats per minute. In AFib, we are not able to determine the atrial rate. Neither arrhythmia has P waves, atrial flutter has sawtooth flutter or F waves, and AFib has fibrillatory F waves. The R waves in atrial flutter are usually regular, but in AFib they are irregular. Neither arrhythmia has a PR interval, but the QRS width on both is normal. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on atrial flutter and AFib. Be sure to check out our other videos in the description below, especially our new EKG interpretation playlist. For those of you preparing for the NCLEX, be sure to check out our study guide and flashcard resources.